This is Math 432, Applied Combinatorics, and I'm Professor Isaf. The problem that's going to motivate the next week of lectures is the following. What is the smallest integer n such that any simple graph, g, with n vertices, either g or its complement, has a triangle? So let's think about that. We're trying to draw a graph so that as long as we have n vertices, the graph or its complement has a triangle. So certainly we're going to think about some obvious things. So we know that n is definitely going to be bigger than 2 because the graph here, we have an edge. There's clearly no room for a triangle here. Or if we took the empty graph, that also doesn't have a triangle. Notice that we can take the complement of both of these. So here's the complement g prime. Here it has no edges, so this is g prime. And the graph on the left is g. Oh, not the prime. Okay, so one way we can think about this is that if we think about g and g prime stacked on top of each other, that's going to be the complete graph. So that sort of gives us a nice way to think about it. We can draw g and g prime at the same time by drawing the complete graph kn. So here, okay, we've solved our problem. Well, we've not solved our problem. We've narrowed it down. We know that n is at least 2. Okay, let's look at n equals 3. Is it true that for every simple graph on three vertices, either the graph or its complement has a triangle? So here I've drawn all simple graphs on three vertices. This is the, this is the graph with no edges. Here I'm thinking of the blue edges as g. Here's one edge here, so this has two connected components. And these are the two connected graphs on three vertices up to isomorphism. Okay, so it doesn't matter which edges I picked. By drawing g and g prime together, I get the complete graph k3. Now, is it true that every one of these graphs either has a blue triangle or a red triangle? Well, of course not. So here, these two examples, no. So half the time we get a triangle and half the time we don't. So this tells us that the n that we're looking for is bigger than 3. Okay, well, what about k4? So now I'm going to try to do it by just constructing it. So I'm going to take four vertices. Is it maybe true that any graph on four vertices that I draw, and I'm going to draw the complete graph with blue and red edges, either I want to have a blue triangle or a red triangle. Well, let me see if I can avoid doing that. So here I'm going to put a lot of blue edges in. And now I've avoided making a triangle. Notice that if I add this edge, that makes a triangle. This edge adds a triangle. And that edge adds a triangle. So that's all the blue edges I want. So this is my graph G. What's the complement? Well, remember that the complement, G prime, when I add it to G, I'm going to get the complete graph. So that means I have to have this edge, this edge, and this edge. Ah, I've just made a triangle. Does that mean that n equals 3? Well, no. I have to say, well, that's one way I could try to do it. So maybe I just wasn't clever enough. That definitely gave me a triangle, so that was bad. So let me try something different. So I don't want to get a triangle. Keep that in mind. Well, it didn't work when I sort of took this guy that had lots of edges there. What if I just take the outer side perimeter here? This as g. This does not have a triangle. This is a 4 cycle. What edges are left for g prime? Well, luckily... G prime is only going to have two edges left. So it's definitely not going to form a triangle. In fact, it's not even connected. Aha! So this shows me. So this one here, I got a red triangle. And here I get no triangle. There's no triangle that's monochromatic. There's not a blue triangle and there's not a red triangle. So now we know that n, the number we're seeking, is greater than 4. So we're kind of, it's not clear that we can ever do it. It might be the case that every single graph we ever draw, no matter how many vertices, will never be forced to have a triangle either in G or in G prime. But let's keep going anyway. Can I do it for five? So we know that N is at least four. So is N equal to five is the next question that we want to answer. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to draw the complete graph on five vertices. And we're going to draw it in such a way that our blue edges are going to be the graph G. 
and our red edges will be everything else to get the complete graph, that'll be g prime. So here, what if I took g to be, I'm gonna do the same trick I did last time. I'm gonna draw around the outside. That's gonna be g. That clearly has no triangle, okay? What does g prime look like? So g prime is gonna be everything else. So remember the complete graph, on um, K5 is gonna have every vertex has degree four. So I'm gonna connect this guy down here and down here. Okay, that's not a triangle, and luckily I'm not gonna take that edge, so I'm okay there. Um, I also need to connect this with this. Okay, have I made a triangle? No, not yet. And I also need to connect this with this. And we can see from this star that actually this is a five cycle. It has no triangle. And we can see here that G itself is obviously a five cycle. And the two graphs together give us K5. So this means that N is greater than five. Neither G nor G prime contains a triangle. Okay, well, is N equal to six? I could try the same thing. Now I've got to draw a hexagon. And I'm gonna to try to draw the complete graph. Again, K6. Let's try the same idea. It worked really well before, so we might as well keep trying it. I'm gonna draw my six cycle around the outside. And now, on the inside, well, I can see that I'm gonna get into trouble. I'm gonna to try to draw one, two, three. The problem is, once I've drawn these, so I know that every vertex has degree five, here I know I'm gonna get this edge too. So I'm gonna get lots more edges, but aha, here we have a red triangle. So I haven't given a counter example yet. So it's still possible that n equals six. And in fact, if you look at homework uh, problem one, or homework set one, uh, problem three, or if you look at homework 10, problem three, they both prove that actually, no matter how I do it for n equals six, I'm always going to get either a blue triangle or a red triangle. And in fact, yes, n is equal to six for this problem. The smallest integer such that any simple graph on n either has a triangle or its complement has a triangle is n equals six. There's no way to draw a simple graph on six vertices such that neither the graph nor its complement has a triangle. This is an example of Ramsey theory. So what's a, what is the Ramsey theory? Here's the statement. The Ramsey number takes two parameters, S and T, okay? It's the smallest positive integer. It's a number like the number six, such that any simple graph on this many vertices, either the graph contains the complete graph, a clique of size S, or the complement contains a clique of size T. So as an example, what we've just seen, if you believe the homework problems, is that R of three, three is equal to six. Ramsey number three, three is equal to six. Six is the smallest because for five, we have a counter example. And for six, we have a proof. So for six, we have to prove abstractly that we can do it. And for five, we have to give an example to show that that doesn't work. And that proves that R of three, three equals six. So in the next few videos, we're gonna talk about computing other Ramsey numbers, and we're gonna see, we're gonna prove that Ramsey numbers actually exist, that they're never infinity. You can always do it with a finite size.